G'day everyone, welcome to your Friday footy feed. We have a lot to get through and we begin with some fresh news just coming into us. The number of AFL players earning more than a million dollars a year has in fact dropped in the past 12 months. The data shows there were eight players in the top band a year ago. Now there's only five. The average player earning around $265,000 in 2013, an increase of around 14000 There's 60, 63 players earning more than half a million dollars. Let's go straight to Nathan Schmuck in the newsroom. Nathan, what's the reason for the drop? Well, Matty, a lot of players would have been benefiting from front-ended or back-ended contracts in 2012, so those have to end. Obviously, contracts are getting more and more complicated every year, so those changes happen year on year. So, Nathan, best guess, who are the Million Dollar Men? Well, Gary Ablett's the big name, Matty. He moved to Gold Coast on a big payday, so he's still benefiting from that. Tom Scully, likewise, at GWS. Aaron Sandlands, we understand, got a big payday at Fremantle, benefiting from the veterans list. And St Kilda's Nick Rewalt and Carlton's Chris Judd, we believe they could be in that top bracket. All right, Nathan, thank you for that. Nathan Schmuck reporting. You can read more from Nathan online. Now, the AFL Commission has set about reviewing how the league dealt with the Essendon Supplements scandal. It was just one of the topics canvassed in a wide-ranging interview with Andrew Demetriou here on afl.com.au. The league chief admits it would have been preferable if the scandal hadn't become as personal as it did towards the end of last season. Look, we're, we're currently reviewing all of that, Matty, with the Commission... Um, you, know, you know, when you're in the moment, you think you're doing everything that you could possibly do. And it was a very complex um, situation. But I, look, I'm pretty proud of the way the AFL uh, handled the, the supplement saga. Dimitri also spoke about Lance Franklin's mega deal with the Sydney Swans, explaining the AFL had no place to stand in the club's way, but saying there is an element of risk. It's great for the game when you consider that he's playing for Sydney and he's in that market, or people are already talking about it. Uh, but people are entitled to question the length of the agreement. You can watch the full interview here on the website. Now, Port Adelaide President David Koch has weighed into the debate about Richmond player Jake King's friendship with the well-known bikey. What would you do, Koch, at Port? Oh, we do. OK, this is just what we do. We do and, and you know, every club's different, but we get rid of him. King offered no comment as he boarded the team bus for the trip to Wangaratha today. Richmond plays there against Collingwood tomorrow. Collingwood player Marley Williams will be sentenced in April after a West Australian jury found him guilty of grievous bodily harm for breaking a man's jaw in a one-punch attack, his football future in serious doubt. From our point of view, you know, I think in those circumstances, football uh, is, is the least of, of his priorities right now. The incident outside a nightclub happened during the 2012 Christmas holidays. The charge carries a possible maximum sentence of 10 years in prison. The Pies say they don't want to preempt the sentencing process. Now, it was the horrific injury that defined the opening game of the NAB Challenge, but just nine days later, George Burberry is back at Simmons Stadium, hopeful of returning to training next week. The 21-year-old forward has multiple fractures in his jaw. Got quite serious impact on this side of my jaw. Um, and in doing so, that pushed my jaw to the right, and luckily I cracked it down there. If I'd have cracked it over this side as well, then I would have just had a floating jaw and would have been quite a lot, a lot more severe. He'll wear a fluoro cap when he returns to training, so his teammates will know not to tackle him. He still can't chew. I can eat risottos and, um, yeah, as I said, mashed up spaghetti bolognese and plenty of up and goes and protein shakes and all that sort of stuff, but, um, yeah, I, I'm yeah, a long way off a regular diet, unfortunately. Burberry was wearing a mouth guard at the time. Saving his teeth, he says he'll never take the field without one again. And it's looming as a big year for young Western Bulldogs forward Jake Stringer. On and off the field, the 19-year-old and his longtime partner are expecting their first child and he'll be turning to his senior teammates for support. Got to grow up a little bit quicker, which is always good, but, I mean, there's plenty of great people around the club. Adam Cooney, GR Murph, Dale Morris, Boydie, all those boys, so they've been really good for me. On the field, he'll be part of a bolstered forward line alongside former bomber Stuart Cramery. OK, the NAB Challenge continues tonight. Hawthorne and North Melbourne in Launceston. You can stream the game on the AFL Live official app and catch the highlights on afl.com.au. That's it for Footy Feed this Friday. For the entire team in the control room, our camera guys in media exchange, thanks so much to you all. I'm Matt Thompson. Have a great weekend.